Cyberpunk 2077 is a huge game with a whole lot of freedom to approach things however you want. With that in mind, here are some good tips to help you get the most out of your time in Night City. Remember to like and subscribe for more Cyberpunk. Let's go Samurai. As you level up, you will get attribute points and skill points. And while it's fun to learn new skills, attribute points are crucial as they dictate V's base stats and the perks available to them in that attribute's skill trees. Upgrading your body will improve your health, cool improves stealth, and reflexes improve your damage output with firearms. On top of this, some open up different dialogue options while others give you the strength to pry open doors. Attached to each stat are two to three skill trees, which consist of both active skills and passive perks. It's good practice to focus on the attributes that have skills and perks you're interested in, so if you want to be an efficient netrunner, invest your attribute points into intelligence. That being said, you could save your attributes for when you come across a door that might require one more point in body than you currently have and be a bit more opportune with your upgrades. V's phone is constantly blowing up and it's in your best interest to check it regularly. Most of the time it'll be a fixer sending you details on a job or a sick set of wheels that you can buy. However, sometimes the friends you've made in Night City will drop you a line and you definitely should reply. Don't leave them on red because not only will these messages open up new quests, sometimes they're just really funny and endearing. Speaking of V's phone, there are an overwhelming amount of side quests in Cyberpunk 2077. Trying to do all of them on a first playthrough is ambitious to say the least, so to take the pressure off a bit, I would encourage everyone to help out the key characters you meet along the way. In my experience, these are some of the best missions and net you some of the most valuable rewards in the game. You will constantly cycle through new weapons. Rather than just tossing your outdated firearm on the ground, you should sell it or break it down for components. Early on, guns are probably the most valuable things you'll commonly find. The downside is that they weigh a lot and you have a weight limit on what you can carry, so I'd recommend selling your old weapons every chance you get. Alternatively, you can break down weapons which will net you some weapon components that can be used to upgrade the ones you like or craft rare weapons. But wait, don't break down or sell those iconic weapons, even if you're way over leveled for them. Iconic weapons usually have a perk that make them unique, so if you find yourself attached to a specific one, consider upgrading the weapon to keep it viable instead. This is pretty easy to do. When you find an iconic weapon, you'll automatically get the blueprints to upgrade it. The amount of times you can upgrade an iconic weapon depends on the rarity tier you find it at. Using common, uncommon, rare, epic, and legendary components, you can upgrade your iconic weapons in the crafting menu and keep them around for longer. If you're playing as a netrunner or hacker, you won't be able to do much with the cyberdeck that you start with. Cyberdecks determine how much RAM you have and allow you to equip quick hacks. The nicer the cyber deck you have, the more quick hacks you have at your disposal, and the more RAM you have, the more quick hacks you can do in succession, so upgrade that puppy ASAP. Another quick tip for netrunners is to always have a stock of powerful quick hacks. Swing by netrunner stores to pick up new and more powerful quick hacks which you can slot into your cyber deck. Quick hacks are a netrunner's bread and butter. These range from abilities that shred an enemy's neural system to hacks that jam an enemy's gun. Whether you decide to play as a lethal or non-lethal netrunner, buying and equipping the right quick hacks is crucial. This should go without saying, but save often. Chances are encounters won't always go as you hoped and you'll want to take another shot at it. The autosave function is pretty generous, but occasionally I found myself rolling a little further back than I would have liked. Also, the game is pretty buggy right now. Sometimes quests will break and the game might crash. The more you save, the less progress you could lose. So there are our nine tips to help you get the most out of your early hours in Cyberpunk 2077. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and subscribe. We've got plenty more on Cyberpunk coming your way soon.